Prince Andrew, Part 4, Meatloaf Fury. Hello, I'm H.G. Tudor. An interesting article came my way on Yahoo News, which merited further observation for the purposes of understanding the behaviour of Prince Andrew, and to provide you with examples of understanding more about the behaviour of an upper lesser type A. The article has the headline, and it's written by Patrick Spruill, Meet Loaf, said Prince Andrew, once tried to push him into a moat after he caught Sarah Ferguson paying attention to him. As you know, Meet Loaf, the Grammy-winning singer and actor, died aged 74 just recently. And in 2003, he revealed that Prince Andrew once tried to push him into a moat over the attention of Sarah Fergie Ferguson. The altercation took place at a 1987 charity tournament featuring the royal family and celebrities. Mr Loaf, the rock star and actor who died last Thursday aged 74, said he was once almost pushed into a moat by Prince Andrew over the attention of Sarah Ferguson. The singer and actor, whose real name was Marvin Lee Ade, participated in the 1987 televised charity tournament It's a Royal Knockout, filmed at Alton Towers. Members of the royal family competed in teams alongside celebrities like John Travolta, Sheena Easton, Cliff Richard and John Cleese in a bid to raise money for charity. In a 2003 interview with The Guardian, Meatloaf said that it was great fun, I had a great time, but joked that the Queen hates me. He revealed that he caught the attention of Sarah Ferguson, Prince Andrew's wife, prior to their divorce in 1996. Fergie wasn't exactly flirting with me, said Mr Loaf, but she was paying attention to me, he said. And I think Andrew got a little, I could be wrong, I'm just reading into this, I think he got a little jealous. Anyway, he tried to push me in the water, he tried to push me in the moat. So I turned round and I grabbed him and he goes, you can't touch me, I'm royal. I said, well, you tried to push me in the moat, Jack, I don't give a shit who you are, you're going in the moat. Meatloaf's death on Thursday was announced in a statement released on the Star's Facebook page. Our hearts are broken to announce that the incomparable Meatloaf passed away tonight with his wife Deborah by his side, it said. Tributes from the entertainment world poured in. Cher, who recorded Dead Ringer for Love with him, honoured the star tweeting, Had so much fun with Meatloaf when we did Dead Ringer. I'm very sorry for his family, friends and fans. I may imagine it, or are amazing people in the arts dying every other day. Prince Andrew is currently facing a sexual assault lawsuit filed in August last year by Virginia Roberts Euphre, who alleges that Jeffrey Epstein forced her to have sex with Andrew in Epstein's New York mansion in London and on Epstein's private island in the US Virgin Islands. Buckingham Palace announced last week that Andrew would face the lawsuit as a private citizen and that his military titles and royal patronages would be removed. Thus the article ends. Now, what does this tell us? Well, let us assume that Mr Loaf's recollection is entirely accurate. There's no reason to think that he would be lying about this. And therefore, what is going on? Well, he turns up at the event, and I can imagine that he'd be quite an ebullient and outgoing character, and he's having a bit of chat with the flame-haired Sarah Fergie Ferguson. She's not at the stage of getting her freckled bangers out. Maybe that was on the cards if the interaction had continued, but she's chatting away with him. Now, of course, at that juncture... Fergie was the intimate partner primary source of Prince Andrew. She was the individual that was determined by his narcissism to be the best provider of the prime aims. The easiest one to control, the one that provided the most fuel, the one that provided excellent character traits and residual benefits. And in the circumstances, she was harnessed for those purposes. However, when she's talking to Mr Loaf, two problems arise. The fact that she's not talking to Andrew telegraphs that he's not important. Now, it's not the case that Sarah Ferguson is deliberately starting to suggest to her husband, I don't like you, you're unimportant, you don't matter, you're a nobody. She's simply talking to Mr Loaf. However, 
The fact that she's doing that from the perspective of the narcissist is interpreted by him as telling him that he doesn't matter. That's why you will have found that in certain social situations, if other people are talking to you and not the narcissist, you may well have noticed an adverse reaction from the narcissist, for instance, try to draw attention back onto themselves by talking about themselves, or causing a scene by knocking something over, or perhaps sitting and sulking. All of those are reactions to the threat to control posed by the fact that attention is on you rather than on them. Or that your attention, as a meaningful part of the fuel matrix, is directed elsewhere and not upon the narcissist. And that was the case here. Sarah Ferguson, as the intimate partner primary source, was giving fuel to Mr. Loaf. Now, it's not the case that Mr. Loaf necessarily needed fuel. However, where you're talking to somebody other than the narcissist, in our world, that's effectively wasted fuel and signals to us that we don't matter. There is a threat to control because, in effect, we regard it as you ignoring us. Of course, your intention is irrelevant. You may well not be ignoring us, you're just engaging in normal social discourse with another person. But it is interpreted by the narcissist that you're effectively ignoring us. You become painted black. And also, the individual that is occupying your time, here, meet Loaf, is similarly painted black. Mr Loaf may well have been a tertiary source, possibly non-intimate secondary source, but most likely a tertiary source with regard to the It's a Royal Knockout. Because Prince Andrew's control of Sarah Fergie Ferguson was being threatened, that meant that his narcissism needed to motivate him, to cause him, to take action, to nullify the threat posed to control by the conversation going on between Mr Loaf and Sarah Fergie Ferguson. It might have been the case that he could have gone over and said to Fergie, I just need you for a moment, and he pulls her away. And thus, he nullifies the threat to control and brings her attention back onto him. Some narcissists would respond in that way. Andrew doesn't bother with a facade, however, as an upper lesser type A, and rather goes in in an affable arsehole kind of manner. He is well known for sort of buffoonery and tomfoolery, thinking that certain practical jokes are hugely amusing. And therefore, it's entirely envisageable that he did go across and basically attempt to push Mr. Loaf into the moat. That would, of course, assert control directly over Mr. Loaf by shoving him into the water, in effect, giving him a corrective devaluation. Him sliding into the moat would allow Prince Andrew's narcissism to have a sense of control over him and would also receive fuel from no doubt the spluttering and annoyed reaction of Mr. Loaf. It would also mean that Fergie's attention would be back on Prince Andrew, all problems solved, appliances brought under control, threats duly nullified. However, of course, his attempts to get Mr. Loaf into the moat didn't reach fruition, and instead he tried to push him in the water, but it didn't work. And instead, Mr. M Mr. Loaf turns around and grabs Prince Andrew. That grabbing of him is challenge fuel. It's an emotional response negative in nature, but is also trying to stop Prince Andrew asserting control. As a consequence of that threat, Prince Andrew's instinctive response is to say, you can't touch me, I'm royal. Haughty, dismissive, grandiosity. Mr Loaf isn't taking it. He's American, and he's got no time for those pesky royals. Instead, he declares, well, you're trying to push me in the moat, Jack, and I don't give a shit who you are, you're going in the moat. Unfortunately, the story doesn't tell us whether Mr. Loaf dunked Prince Andrew. I suspect that he didn't. Nor does it say what happened thereafter. It's highly likely that Mr. Loaf perhaps backed down and left matters there, didn't want to make too much of a scene, or Prince Andrew huffily strode away, perhaps taking the hand of Sarah Fergie Ferguson and taking him with her. But what this interesting article does is provide us with a lovely opportunity to see the reaction of a narcissist whereby the narcissist is made to feel jealous by the narcissism to motivate him to take action. So, upon seeing the threat, the narcissism, in order to galvanise Prince Andrew into action, makes him feel jealousy and tells him that Mr Loaf deserves a soaking, and therefore he's motivated to act in the way that he did. He demonstrates his sense of entitlement, his lack of accountability for his behaviour, and a lack of emotional empathy, and underpins his narcissist credentials. An excellent example of demonstrating the way that the affable arsehole would behave in such circumstances. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.